Hey everybody, welcome to a special episode of the Tom Ferry Show. Today, I'm just answering your questions live from social media. For over 20 years, I've dedicated my life to bringing you the very best selling, marketing and business building strategies to keep your business thriving. Get ready to experience the success you've been searching for. Welcome to the Tom Ferry Show. Hey everybody, welcome to the Tom Ferry Show. Today, I'm answering all of your questions. Well, truthfully, we put out this great post on a bunch of our social sites and we said, how can we help? How can we bring you value? So my intention for today is to answer as many questions as I can and my hope, my, my inspiration, my intention is that the one question you need asked most to grow your business, to change your business, to make everything you want possible possible today on this show. So let's go to the first question. Uh, Darla Mickelson on Facebook asked, hey Tom, what's the most important thing to work on when trying to get new clients? Well, Darla, here's the good news. In 2017, there's two ways to approach this. Number one, work on nothing, buy the leads. Yes, you can arbitrage sites like Zillow and Realtor and Trulia and Zerple and Derple and Ding Ding and Facebook, and you can do all this stuff, meaning you can run ads or you can buy through their advertising vehicle and get your leads on your own. But I don't think that's what you're asking. Let me give you a little secret insider tip that all the best agents know. If I'm doing an open house, or I'm connecting with a referral, or I'm meeting somebody at Starbucks, or, or any random person that you talk to, the game is to have locals only knowledge. You see, if you're out shopping, right, you don't wanna work with an agent from anywhere. You wanna know, hey, I'm in San Dimas, California. This person knows the ins and outs. They know the pocket listings. They know the hot communities. They know the not communities. They know the best schools. The reality is you're gonna make yourself way more valuable to all these prospects beyond all the sites where they can go and get all this information by going deep and having the locals only knowledge. That's gonna give you the edge when you're doing an open house or you get referred to somebody or you meet somebody at the door or however you meet them, have that locals only knowledge. And if all else fails, buy the leads because that's an option as well. Let's see, the Daniel Wang on Instagram asked, when are you at your happiest? Um, you know, uh, first of all, Daniel, thank you. Uh, I think it's super important to be happy, but I also understand that you need contrast in your life. Like if you don't have some really bad days, you don't appreciate the good days. You gotta enjoy the darkness to enjoy the light. You with me on this? So like, I'm actually okay with suffering. I'm okay with getting my butt kicked all the time. Uh, but at the end of the day, I'm happiest when I'm contributing. I'm happiest when I'm learning. I'm happiest when I'm with my family. I'm happiest when I'm introducing people and making new connections. Um, that's probably it. I mean, at the end of the day, like it's, it's family and contribution and connection. That's what brings me the most joy and happiness. So thank you for asking. Joe Moore 10 on Instagram asked, Best advice you would give to agents that are one to three years in the business? Well, I'd probably go back to that Darla conversation earlier, but here's the thing I would tell you, and I've done a lot on this subject matter, and you know, look, we all were new at one time. I might have a friend watching this who's 45 years in real estate. You remember when you were new, when you were new and the great agents keep that new perspective all the time, right? We always keep it fresh. That's why you stay relevant. That's how you win in this business. So um, what I would tell you, uh, what I would tell you, Joe Moore 10 is, number one, you gotta decide, right? You gotta decide that you're gonna be a part of Club 13, knowing that 87% of the industry that gets in fails after five years. So that declaration to be in Club 13, number two, you gotta know why. Why is it an absolute must for you? And look, at the end of the day, Real estate is about um, housing and homeownership and raising a family or making investments, but it all boils down to economics, buddy. So, you know, why do you wanna make a lot of money? Because in this game, being an entrepreneur, starting your own business, even inside a brokerage, right? Having your own LLC, C Corp, S Corp, wherever you are in the world, your own business corporation, you are taking on the role and responsibility of being the CEO of your business. That takes game, that takes chutzpah, you with me on this? So you gotta step up, you gotta decide, you gotta know why, and then number three, you gotta be a marathon runner. Let me say this to you again, you gotta be a marathon runner. It's so funny to me how many people are looking for the quick buck, chasing money. Look, I've been doing this for a long time, almost three decades, and one of the most important pieces of advice my mentor, Bill Mitchell, gave me, I wrote about it in Success Magazine recently, was never chase money. 
that I remember going to him in my, you know, my early 20s and saying, you know, what's the most important advice you would give me building my career, starting out? And he was like, don't chase money. Become the kind of person that delivers so much value to the marketplace. The people around you, your buyers, your sellers, your clients, your friends, your family bring so much value that the money follows you. Think about it like this. He also said to me that your income is in direct correlation to the value you deliver. Now, you're in a very crowded business, a very crowded space called real estate. There's a lot of people running around with business cards and you know, on social media, I'm in real estate, I love homes, I love people, but they're not running a business. So the thing I would tell you is, you're playing the marathon game, you're playing the long haul. So you should be thinking about your one year, your three year, your five year, your 10 year, and your 20 year plan in this business. Do you wanna end up in 20 years owning a bunch of property? Or do you wanna end up in 20 years having to work still to get listings and sales, right? Like, it's a mindset. You have to decide how you wanna be. And then number four is, at the end of the day, this is an easy business. Whoever talks to the most people wins. Like, that's the game. I posted something on Instagram about this recently. I'm like, look, I mean, it's, it's talk to people every day, deliver value, ask if they want help, close for an appointment. Do it over and over and over, and where most people fail is number one. They don't talk to anybody. So, Joe Moore 10, talk to 10 people every day, Joe Moore 10, and guess what's gonna happen? You talk to 10 people a day. The numbers show that every 50 people you talk to, you make one sale. Every 50 people you talk to, you make one sale. You do 10 a day, five days a week, 48, day, or 48 weeks in, in a year, and you know what's gonna happen, my friend? you are gonna be wildly successful. So that's my advice. Cedric Daytan, I hope I'm saying that right. Cedric Daytan, uh, he asked via Instagram, what's the most important question to ask a buyer uh, in the first contact on the phone to turn that lead into a real buyer? Um, you know, there's so much data and study that's been done around that first initial contact. First of all, it's important you get them on the phone first, right? Speed, under five minutes. You know what the thing is? If you just ask yourself, what do they want? Most of them are like, hi, uh, or they went, hi, I'd like to see that house. So why not just start with, hi, thank you so much for visiting site X and putting in your information. How soon would you like to see that property? At the end of the day, uh, give the people what they want. You know what I mean? Like I, I'm just thinking of, there's probably not a magic script that's gonna magically have them like you more or less than the next person. Here's how you win. Get them on the phone. Would you like to see that house? If they're thinking about uh, the value of their home, they're a seller lead, it's like, hey, you know, I'd love for, you know, to come by and take a look at your home to see if, if I can find more hidden assets, more value in the property. Is that of interest to you? Give people what they want and you're gonna win. Easy. Vince Oliviero, I hope I'm saying that right, on Facebook, long question says, hey Tom, if one were to continuously smash through the glass ceiling, I like this already, you're speaking my language, uh, smash through the glass ceiling, only to find that it wasn't good enough, interesting, only to set out for a larger goal the following year, year after year after year, the line in the sand to happiness continually moving. Ah, big difference between happiness and glass ceiling, my friend, so I can already see the first distinction for you. Um, I'll be happy when, Right? Is this a sign of overambitious, motivated SOBs or greed or an ungrateful person? So Vince, first of all, love it, man. You got, you got a lot going on inside there. And I think of, I think of people like Jim Rohn, uh, mentors of mine, Brian Tracy, Mike Vance, uh, my coach, Teresa, for all those years. Look, unfortunately, the human experience, it's like uh, my son once said to me, hey, dad, it, real, when he was young, daddy, can we get a pet? And I was like, oh man, here we go, four years old, or five years old, I'm like, okay, I get it, it's that time, it's time for a puppy, and I was not thinking puppy. And he said, no daddy, I wanna get a snake. And I was like, you wanna get a snake? And I'm like, tell me about that. He says, daddy, I was watching the show Nova, and guess what, if you take a snake and you put it inside a really big cage, the snake will grow to the size of the cage. The glass ceiling, you with me, metaphorically, it's the glass ceiling. And I was like, yeah, and he goes, so I was thinking, Daddy, we would get a snake and we'd let it loose in the house to see how big it gets. So first of all, Vince, consider, the glass ceiling is really your exposure, but it has nothing to do with your happiness. How many people have you read about? How many people have you met? How many stories have you heard about the, the fisherman in Mexico who is the happiest guy on the planet because he does what he loves, he does it for the people that he loves, right? Serving people that he loves. Like, 
it doesn't matter. It's not about the money for him. It's about the experiences and the life that he's been able to create. So Vince, listen to me. I was happy when I was poor and I was happy as a, a person of wealth, if you will. So the bottom line is this, there is not a connection between the two. If you are a miserable SOB and you have lots of money, you will be a miserable SOB. So Vince, separate the two. Glass ceiling has nothing to do with happiness. Got it? All right, let's keep going. So Renee Hansen on Facebook asked me kind of a long question here. Oh, this is big. How do you build an effective team? I'm talking about implementing change, camaraderie, making sure they're not going to leave. Is it all about the money? What are some systems that should have uh, that you gotta have in place in order to have a higher retention rate and a happier team? So Renee, you actually asked about six questions there. Let me see if I can dissect a few of them for you. And this will be, uh, I think, important for everybody. So how do you build an effective team? You gotta decide which model you're gonna go for because there's lots of teams today. Are you gonna be, the, I, I call it the, the non-team team, like the non-team team. That's the single agent who says, I'm gonna utilize the resources of my brokerage. I'm gonna use software and platforms and service providers, my loan officer, my escrow coordinator, my in-house transaction coordinator. That person's the non-team team and they're extremely effective versus say the extreme contrast of that, the mega team with 60 salespeople and the service hub and they're basically a brokerage inside a brokerage or my new favorite team, which is like the SEAL team. And, and I'm no expert in Navy SEALs, uh, though I've met a few and I've studied a bunch. Um, the Navy SEALs, think about it like this. In a, in a SEAL team, everybody's an expert. Everybody can do the work of the person next to them to their right or left, but the way the SEALs roll is, there's leadership roles and responsibilities. So the teams, one of the models you might wanna consider is this Navy SEAL team where you've got a leader for listings, you've got a leader for marketing and getting appointments, you've got a leader for working with buyers, you've got a leader for contract to close, and you might have a leader whose job is to lead, nurture, and book appointments. A five-person super ninja team, if you will. Now, the question though is, how do you effectively um, build that? Number one, you start out with what are the roles and responsibilities? That's where you always start. You never hire the person, you hire the job. Very important distinction. You hire not the person. I really love, you know, Larry, can Larry do the job, right? The job, and if you were to Google every one of these job descriptions, it's certainly available on my site and other sites where you can say the role of a lead nurturer, an ISA, OSA, here's their roles, here's their responsibilities, here's their comp plan. The roles of a TC contract to close, listing coordinator, here's the job description, here's how you pay. Hire the job, not the person. That would be my first thing. Second thing is hire to culture. So you might have to answer the tough question, who are we, what do we stand for, and how do we do it around here? You know, it's a wonderful old story. A uh, friend of mine who was the third base, uh, third base coach for a local JC college here in Southern California. By the way, this young guy um, was a baseball player and then out of, uh, out of college, went to work for UPS and became the youngest senior executive at that company. Big shout out to Kenny if you're watching. And you know, super great guy, learned a lot at UPS, never sold his shares, and then when the company went public, he retired. And he took his cash, and you know what he did? He went back to his uh, alma mater and said to the head coach, hey, I'd love to be the third base coach and basically work for free. And I remember him sitting with me one day and I was telling him like, my belief about teams is you gotta start with your culture and your values and who you are, right? Beyond the job description and higher to the job. And I said, you know, can you give me like an example, like in your own experience at UPS? He goes, let me give you a better one. When I play baseball, he said, I remember first day of training camp, we're all sitting down on the bench, coach is talking to us, we're all sitting there, and everybody got up except for a few of the rookies, myself included, and everybody ran as fast as they could as soon as the coach was done, and they raced out on the field. So he said, well, I said, what did you guys do? He goes, well, of course, we immediately started running as well because we didn't even know what we were doing. And like, it was only a month later when he finally turned to somebody else. He was like, hey, like every time like practice, the guy talks to us and then we race out there. Like, why do we do it? And he said, I'm talking to some sophomore. And he goes, I have no idea. That's just how we do it around here. Like, that's just what we've always done. Um, what's that Montel Williams song? This is how we do it. You need to decide, Renee how you do it around here. One of my clients, Tim Smith, said, we hire to behaviors. And he said at the Smith Group, for example, and I'm gonna do this just from memory, 
everybody does their, uh, their role play. Everybody uh, looks at the daily hot sheets two times a day. Everybody does their hour of power, five past client, five new people. Everybody does follow up. Everybody does geographic farming. Everybody does X number of open houses and they outline the behaviors of all the sales team. That's a part of your culture. So, so Renee, just wanna be clear, like there's a lot to this question, but start with those three. And I have a feeling based upon your other questions, camaraderie and being concerned about people leaving that you've been down this path before. And what I would ask you is, do you have those foundations in place? You know, do you truly have a job description? Do you truly hire to the behaviors? Do you really, can you say to people like, these are our core values, I'm looking on my wall. People, trust, growth, culture, innovation, teamwork, standardization, and fast. Like, you know, that's right on my wall. Like, that's who we are, that's what we do. Can you speak to that and live to that every single day inside your environment with your team? Make sense? And again, big or small or individual or family business, same rule applies. Now. In terms of implementing change camaraderie and making sure they're not gonna leave, let me give you a little heads up. People leave. People leave. People leave. Sometimes they, sometimes they join your team and they leave at the first coffee break. That's happened to a few of my clients. Usually that was a bad hire, right? You, you, you tried to sell them on the job versus actually interviewing them to join your business. Um, so you wanna be really mindful of that. Um, I actually did a whole Tom Ferry show just on hiring an assistant. If you took the same exact concept, Renee, and you applied it to how you interview everybody, strongly recommended. Um, at the end of the day, people are gonna leave. Uh, is it about the money? Yeah, sometimes it's about the money. Um, oftentimes though, my experience, and there's a lot of research on this, Renee, People leave because the culture's wrong, the leader's wrong, the training's not there, they don't see the upside, they don't feel appreciated, they don't feel like they're a part of something, and they don't feel like their voice is being heard. And if you look at the list, and I'm just ripping through one of those you know, great management lists, money is always on there. But again, money is not the defining factor. You know, I have clients that we work with today, right? My coaches, right? <laughs> I mean, there's thousands of these men and women that are hiring and building these extraordinary teams and they can't get the people to leave, right? Because they've created this culture, this glue, this camaraderie. So ready, are you doing a Monday, uh, are you doing a Monday meeting, getting everybody informed, involved and empowered? Do you do every six months a review of every person on your team? This is where you stand, this is where you're at, this is what's going on, this is what I expect from you, and I'll see you again in a session like this in six months. Maybe you do it in March, April, and again in September, October, so people get into this rhythm with you. Um, one of the things you might wanna consider, big shout out to the Spiker Group uh, up in only Maryland, I can never pronounce it, and uh, you know, this beautiful husband and wife team have built this magnificent business at Long and & Foster, and, and they will tell you that when they decided to put standards in place for their team, what you're doing is you're basically saying, this is the minimum it takes to be here. You gotta come to meetings, you gotta do this, you gotta do that, and you gotta produce these results. And if you don't produce the results after 30 days, I'm gonna pull you in and we're gonna have a quick conversation and I'm gonna get you back on your track, on your path, and then if you don't get it again in 30 days, right, then you're kind of on probation and if you don't get it done again in the next 30 days, you're gone. And they said the day that they implemented that, everybody was kind of like, yeah, whatever. And then all of a sudden three people get called in 30 days later because they're not performing. They're not doing the work. They're not, they're not aligning their behaviors with the mission of the team. If you got people that aren't aligning their behaviors with the mission of the team, they are disrupting the culture, the values, everything that you're standing for. So people would literally walk in and go, I can't believe you're doing this. You're letting me go? And the answer was yes, but I didn't let you go. You let yourself go. We told you this is what it takes and you chose to go that way. Does that make sense? So there's 20 bucks you can read on this one, Renee. I'm super proud of you. These were big questions. I know I couldn't get to all of them, but I gotta keep going. So the, uh, this is the SoFlo Realtor. <laughs> the SoFlo, the South Florida Realtor on Instagram says, my memory is horrible. I can't remember scripts or the neighborhoods or information on a prospect. What can I do to help better my chances if I can memorize everything? Um, hopefully I will get an answer because this is killing me. Well, my first question is, SoFlo Realtor, are you even gonna remember that you asked me this question? Um, 
between you and I, I had a similar situation about, let's see now, almost 16, 17 months ago. Um, I'd had a series of concussions and I got exposed to or reconnected to a guy named Dr. Daniel Amen, A-M-E-N. He is the healthy brain doctor. His most recent book that he just sent me is basically Memory Recovery. Let's send this person a copy. So I'm sending you a copy of uh, Dr. Daniel Amen's book, Memory Recovery. He was walking me through it, and look, at the end of the day, it's more of a holistic approach, right? So you, know, you can eat for better brain you know, formula, right? You can do supplements that increase what's going on up here. There's a lot of things you can do naturally and holistically, like changing your diet, changing your sleep pattern. Look, at the end of the day, your memory is everything. Your ability to remember a client, right? To remember a street and then to follow up and take action. It's so important in this business. It's so important in life. So I'm sending that book as a gift. I hope you remember to read it. All right, uh, another question. If you were to purchase another real estate team, what's the most effective, efficient way to determine value or purchase price? Uh, this is from Steven Gruders via Instagram. So if I was gonna purchase a real estate team, what's the most effective way to determine price? Well. So having been involved in um, you know, investing in companies and buying companies and selling companies, no real estate teams, but you know, the, the king of it all, Steve Murray from Real Trends, is a really good friend of mine who I uh, communicate with quite often. He's got about, I don't wanna misquote this, nine or 10 deals in the pipeline right now, agent teams that he has for sale or under contract, something I talked about in 2014 at the summit and said, it's going to happen. So look, Two things you gotta know. Number one, a business isn't saleable if you're doing more than 15% of the total transactions of the team. So the team has gotta be producing at this level and then your personal productivity has gotta be minimized. Otherwise, why would they buy you? Because the fear is I give you the money and you leave. You have gotta have a repeatable and scalable business that you've proven the more you have enterprise, interesting value added in the mix, a specific software you've created, something that you do that is different and unique, that is special, that is repeatable, that's gonna make your business more valuable. Otherwise, here's how it's gonna work. Two and a half, three, five, seven percent, or seven times your EBITDA, your earnings before uh, taxes, interest, depreciation, right? Your profit. So whatever your profit number is, right, that number with your less than 15% sales and the team doing 85% of the balance, that profit multiple is how most people are buying businesses. Now, don't be shocked if you're doing this and you're going down this path, and please let me know if you are, you're gonna hear about some deals that were one times gross commission. You're gonna hear about, um, hey, we're gonna buy you, but it's gonna be a three to five year earnout. That stuff's very normal. One of my closest friends on the planet, sold his business, his real estate practice, that exact way for seven figures. So at the end of the day, think, you know, three, five, seven percent multiple of your profitability, but the key is you gotta be doing less than 15% of all the transactions in your business. Otherwise, you're too much of the, the gravy train, right? And nobody wants to do that. Nobody wants to buy that. All right, one last question. So Steve Manos uh, of Facebook said, Tom, how do I overcome the fear of success? You know, this is an important one, and I would tell you, um, you know, the hard reality is this. All of the best lessons we learn and wisdom shows up from pain and suffering. So when you say fear of success, I don't think you have fear of success. I think you have fear of the work required to generate whatever success means to you. You don't fear success. It's getting up at 5 a.m. that annoys you. You don't fear success. It's having 15 prospects say no to you that probably drives you nuts and stops you. So what I would tell you is, think about it like this. Like, most people around the world, not, that's not fair. A lot of people on this planet are just too soft. You know what I mean? Like they say they want riches. They say they want success. They say they want the car, the house, the money, the investment. They say they want all this stuff, but the truth is they're just not willing to do the work. Um, I remember listening to, uh, this is an old Nightingale Conant program, but it just so resonated for me at the time. 1995, like I remember when I got it. Like remember audio cassettes? Um, Stuart Wilde, W-I-L-D-E, uh, God bless him, passed away, did a program called The 33 Steps to the Infinite Self. And one of the things he talked about was you've got to control the ego, right? This, this stupid little conversation going on inside your head. And one of the things he recommended was 
he, with his English accent, and I could never do it, you know, because he was kind of like Sicilian, but like Italian Sicilian, but lived in England, so grew up there with a little accent. He would say, you know, you got to go outside at four o'clock in the morning. You got to, you got to move rocks. Like you got to move rocks to quiet the mind, to get that stupid conversation out of your head. And what he was saying was, you got to do something every day that is so counterintuitive, so against the grain, so uh, not normal. And for him, he said, I would get up at four o'clock in the morning, rain or shine, didn't matter, snowing outside, and he would ceremoniously move the rocks from one side of his backyard to the next. And I'm a little more careful with my little Buddhas, right? And he did this for a year with only one thought in mind. Get that stupid self-talk to shut up, to actually be able to say to that little conversation in the back of your mind that says, I don't feel like making phone calls or you gotta go to the bathroom or everyone else is going to the movies and you know, you actually have like two listings and two sales and you're already doing well and say, shut up and just keep moving the rocks. Get control of your self-talk Get control of the conversations inside your head and you will be just fine. You do not have a fear of success, my friend. You have a fear of doing the work. Hey, that was super fun. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. Make sure you share it with a friend. I hope I, I hope I answered some of the questions and brought you value today in a way that was meaningful for you. Um, if you've got a question, post it below, whether it's on TomFerry.com or on Insta or on Facebook or on my YouTube channel and allow myself and my team to keep bringing you value. Thank you so much. Remember always your strategy matters and now more than ever, moving rocks absolutely rules. Hey, thanks so much for watching. We have a number of events coming up and we'd love to have you there. Visit tomferry.com forward slash events and reserve your spot today.